Hey, I'm Lewis, welcome to UK Wildcrafts. So this video is the first in a series that I'm making of a month by month foraging calendar. I'm starting in March because it's the beginning of spring and the start of a new cycle. And I love this time of year because there's so many nice wild edible plants just starting to grow. In this foraging calendar series, I'll be including in each month the plants and fungi that are at their peak in that month. But depending on your location and the weather, it might be a little bit earlier or later for you. I do most of my foraging in the southwest of England or South Wales, but most of these plants are relevant if you're in temperate parts of Europe and even in the United States, there's a, in the temperate parts of the United States, a lot of the plants are either the same or fairly similar. This is opposite leaved golden saxifrage, a low growing edible plant that you can find all year, but it's best after it's flowered from March through to early summer. So it's really common in damp woodlands and especially on rocky grounds alongside streams. And it can form really large mats along the woodland floor. It can grow up to about 12 centimetres in the late spring through to summer. And the leaves are rounded and have a slightly toothed margin, no more of a, a scalloped edge really. And the leaves taper at the base. They grow in really densely packed clusters and the leaves grow in opposing pairs. The stems have a square profile and the, the upper surface of the leaves and the stems are usually covered with fine hairs. What really makes this plant stand out is uh, in March when the flowers start to appear, you just get this nice golden color all over the woodland floor. The flowers don't actually have petals. They just have four yellowish green sepals and eight stamen. You can eat the, the leaves, the stems, and the flowers. The leaves can be eaten all winter, but before they flower, they've got a really bitter taste and they're not very nice. But as soon as the flowers appear in March, then they're, they're quite a nice little salad plant. You can just add into your, into your salads. They've got quite a strong flavor, which I can't really uh, describe, but it's a similar taste to Alexander's. So if you've had that, like the aftertaste is a little bit similar to Alexander's. You can eat them raw or cooked. And you can't really mistake this plant for anything else apart from the closely related alternate leaved golden saxifrage, which the main difference obviously is the leaves are alternate instead of opposite. And also it doesn't form dense mats like this. But both this and alternate leaved saxifrage are edible anyway. This is a flowering currant. They're not native to the UK, they're from western United States and Canada. But they can be found around gardens, parks and in waste grounds around the UK. So they flower in very early spring, right from the start of March and then through April. This time of year you can pick the nice bright blossoms and also these young leaves are quite nice. A bit later in the year you can pick the berries though they're not quite as nice as the blossoms and leaves. 
The blossoms have a nice fruity flavour and they're great for making like syrups, cordials and vinegars. The flowers grow in drooping clusters of up to about 30 flowers per cluster. Each flower has five petals which are either a nice bright pink or red. And they've got a nice strong floral smell, fairly similar to the dog rose. The leaves are quite broad and have five lobes very similar to other currants and they've also got quite a strong floral smell when crushed and they've got like a quite a resinous feel to them when they're at this young stage so i highly recommend having a look around parks and around some villages in your area to try and find a few of these bushes they are fairly common and they're very easy to spot this time of year. It's a really nice flavour to these leaves and flowers. This, uh, this time of year you don't get many plants that have this nice sweet flavour. By early to mid-March, wild garlic or ramsons are covering the floors of many UK woodlands. It can be found even earlier from uh, February, but I find early to mid-March is the best time for the wild garlic, well the wild garlic leaves anyway, because they've reached a decent size by that time and it's before they start to flower which uh, in that period is when I find the leaves the, the best to pick. The main indicator for wild garlic or any other allium is when you crush the leaves, give them a smell and you'll get a strong oniony garlic smell. So as long as you've got that smell, then it is safe. So the leaves are tapered at both ends and on the underside you've got a pronounced white midrib and the veins in the leaf run parallel to the midrib. Just be a bit careful when you're picking wild garlic that you're not picking uh, this plant here, Lords and Ladies or the Arum Lily. They do grow in the same environment and at the same time as wild garlic. See, the more mature leaves here will be quite difficult to mistake for wild garlic, but these younger ones, like this, are a very similar colour to wild garlic so that would be fairly easy to mistake and these are poisonous so the thing that you really have to check as I said before is the smell crush it get the garlic smell and it's fine I have done other videos more in depth of how to identify this plant the arum lily or lords and ladies I'll leave that in the description well, garlic is a very versatile leaf. It's good fermented, wilted, fried, dried, uh, ground down into a powder and used as a seasoning. There's <clears throat> lots of uses for it. And uh, it's one of the first plants that I learned to forage and it's still one of the ones I look forward to most coming into season. So this time of year, early spring, 
there's still not that much heat coming from the sun or reaching the, uh, the woodland floor. So what you can do to get a bit of a, a head start is to find woodlands that have a south facing slope like this and that are a, a bit more open so they get this the light earlier and another thing is if you look around say like fallen trees like this here they're given a bit of protection from the elements and you'll often get nicer looking leaves just by the side of them because the uh, the wind chill can make the ground a lot colder so even just a few degrees extra that this log is uh, given this bit of ground here is quite a lot of difference at this time of year so you'll find much healthier looking plants in early spring when they're protected. These are magnolia blossoms and they are good and edible. They're best around March and April and they vary in taste. Sometimes they're quite bitter and sometimes they taste just like ginger. They have quite a strong flavour and if you use them raw in salads you only need a small amount. But my favourite use for them is to sweet pickle them. They taste just like the pickled ginger that you eat with sushi. So when the buds are closed, they're more bitter. And when the, the blossoms start to open up and you can see the magnolia pineapple inside, the petals usually taste a bit better. Just be careful when you're picking them. If you want to pickle them, they do bruise very easily and they go quite brown, which doesn't really affect the flavor, but it doesn't look as nice. Another good edible plant in March are dock, especially the younger leaves like this here. At this time of year, you can harvest these nice young leaves and these are a really good source of iron. They've got a nice tart, lemony flavor very similar to the closely related sorrels. And this flavor comes from oxalic acid, which is fine to eat, but it's not something you wanna consume every day. So a sorrel or dock, I'll only eat these a couple of times a week. You'll find dock growing just about anywhere, especially on disturbed soil. And little patches of uh, waste ground like this are perfect for it. Broadleaf dock have wide oval leaves and they can grow quite a bit bigger than this, maybe two or three times the size of this leaf. And they are chordate or heart shaped at the base. And they have a fairly rounded tip. So curled dock leaves are much narrower and have a wavier margin. All docks are characterized by untoothed and unlobed margins. It may look like they're slightly toothed, but when you look closer, it's actually just because the, the margins are wavy, but they're not toothed. And also at the base of the leaf stems, they've got these protective sheaths called ochria. On younger plants like this, they're just a light green, but as the plant matures, they go brown and papery. And the, the stems of these very young leaves they're really mucinogenic. Well, they release a slime when you pick them. Like that.
So that's another good ID feature. Obviously when you cook the leaves, it gets rid of this slime. But that's the sort of leaf you want to be going for, just as they're starting to open up and uncurl. And then you can see the protective sheath. That's another good one there. Oh, that one's really slimy. It's probably better to cut these off with a knife, to be honest. But I generally don't go for the leaves once they've opened up fully because they're really bitter. Only ones like this. You can sometimes find the seeds still this time of year of the dock and they've got like a, a rusty red colour. So that can be a good way of finding the plants because the fresh growth will be at the base of it. This is greater stitchwort, an edible plant that you'll find growing out of hedgerows and in grasslands throughout the spring. Its leaves grow in an opposite arrangement and they're quite narrow and look a bit like blades of grass. And they grow on a square stem. The flowers have five petals, although from a distance it can look like ten because they are quite deeply notched. The flowers are white, they look quite similar to chickweed flowers and they are quite closely related. The greater stitch work flowers are usually about three centimeters across. And the only thing you'll mistake it for are, like I said, other members of the Stellaria family like chickweed or um, lesser stitchwort also looks very similar but they have smaller flowers there, usually up to about one centimetre across. But all of those flowers that I've mentioned are edible. The chickweed, greater and lesser stitchwort are all edible. When the seeds ripen they have like a projectile system to launch the seeds and they can make quite a loud pop. A stitch where it doesn't really have much of a flavour, maybe just like a mild lettuce and it's just good added into salads. You do find them in quite large numbers so it's quite easy to collect some of the flowers and leaves and the younger stems as well before they go to brittle can be eaten and the flowers make quite a nice decoration as well. It's believed that eating this plant can cure stitch, though I've not actually tried that. 